believe we're doing this. It's not my fault. All right, guys, where is she? Arlo. Just a second, Mom. Arlo? Oh, Jim, we haven't seen you in months. Why don't you stay for dinner? Well, I'd love to, Mrs. Anderson, but... I... He has a date. A date? Jim, that's wonderful. <laughs> you boys are getting to be that age. Mom, matchsticks won't stop you from crying. It has no basis in science. Well, it works for me. I read it in the book. Ah! Uh... What are you doing? Uh... We'll set the table, Mom. Nazis. Gertrude, come out of there. Oh, poor thing. Arlo, I believe I'm a fairly tolerant human being. We all have our own special place in this world. But I do not allow iguanas in my kitchen. Even Gertrude, here you go. Yes, Mom. Do we understand each other? <laughs> hey, Treacle, slow down. The last time, Arlo. If I knew we were going to be messing with your reptiles again. Snakes, lizards, frogs. It isn't the same anymore, Arlo. Remember when we had 20 guys down here? They couldn't believe all our snakes. We were in the fourth grade, Arlo. So? Kids still think it's cool. Well, maybe the chess club does, but the rest of the school thinks you're a Rubus. Well, these guys still like me. We have a lot in common, don't we, Henry? Look, Arlo, I'll put it to you straight. You gotta stop talking to snakes and start talking to girls. Well, I can talk to both, can I? Arlo, any girl who talks to a guy who talks to snakes ain't worth talking to. You never even kissed a girl. I have two. Name one. Uh... Arlene. Your sister? It was her wedding. Uh, everybody in their cages? Post is clear, Dad. Hey, Jimbo. Long time no see, buddy. Will you and Arlo get into a fight or something? No. Busy. How'd the game go, Mr. Anderson? Uh, let's just say that we're not as young as we used to be. But I read about your big win over there at Cleveland Junior High. Newspapers said you just flew over those hurdles. Well, yeah, except the last one. Yeah, well, you stick with your athletics, Jimbo. When I was your age, you know what they used to call me? What? Lightning Legs Anderson. Yeah, you play football, don't you, Jimbo? Well, when I was a first-string running back, we didn't wear no pads then either, you understand? It was man against man, okay? And when you got hit, whoa! You want more Saturday? I think I got something planned. Oh, sure. Well, I'll be seeing you, Arlo. See ya. Hey, wait. Do you think... Do you think maybe you could get me a date? Well, uh, let me see what I can do, Snake Eyes. But you gotta promise me one thing. You name it. You won't act like a nerd. <laughs> Later, Gator. In a while, crocodile. Too much or not enough? It looks good. It's 
strike a room. <laughs> Dad? Yeah? Could I get an advance for my allowance? Oh, they have in the science fair already, huh? No, it's not for another two weeks. Oh, what is it this time? Mealworms for a gecko? Or frozen it's rat? It's for a date. Arlo, really? A date? I'm meeting them in front of the theater. Hey, wait, wait. Here's a 20. It's enough for a movie and a couple of malts later. Whoa, thanks, Dad. Wow. A two-for-one lizard sale. Who's that? Science fair wasn't for another two weeks yet. What kind of frog are you? Just came in. Box says it's from Italy. How much? Well, for my preferred customers, twenty dollars. Pay back tomorrow. Now remember. I know, I know. Arlo, Susie, Susie, Arlo. Susie, did you know some frogs use their eyes to push down their food? Uh, no, I didn't. You didn't tell me you were setting up my best friend with Arlo Anderson. I thought I did. Well, I only mention that because we're both in Mr. Freed's science class. Oh, really? Yeah. Arlo's the one who brought in the foot-long worms. Oh, yeah. Arlo always gets A's. <laughs> you should see his science projects. Oh, I can't stand science. But your talk really taught me some things I never knew about worms. Well, actually, I'd like to become a herpetologist. Yuck! That's a doctor, right, Arlo? Well, yeah, it's like a doctor of reptiles and amphibians. They're extremely interesting creatures. I mean, did you know that some frogs raise tadpoles in their mouths? Yuck! Onions. Never felt better. Sorry, Jim. Sorry. Don't. I've never heard anyone apologize so much in one night. Sorry. Look, Arlo, I gave you a chance. You have this weird attraction to reptiles. 
You couldn't control yourself, and you had to bring a frog on your first date. I'm not mad. We just don't have anything in common anymore. some more eh? when the world seems to shine like you've had too much wine that's some more eh? bells will ring ting a ling a ling ting a ling a ling and you'll sing a bee hey you've come back hey this has been a summer night no uh... arlo arlo are you okay uh uh, sure, Mom. I was just reading. Oh. Timber rattlesnakes are live bears, giving birth in early fall to a litter of nine youngsters. You look a little pale. You want me to make you some nanny tea? No. I'm just tired, I hope. Well, don't worry, sweetie. Not every date turns out the way you plan. When I think of some of my dates with your father. <laughs> oh, well, you're tired. But I just want you to know, Arlo, you're a very special person. Thanks, Mom. We're all special people. Each one of us unique. With our very own personality. A little spark, you see, that burns only in you. And that's something we must treasure each and every day. What a day. I'm bushed. You know, Henry David said it best, I think. If a man does not keep pace with his companions, perhaps it is because he hears a different drummer. Let him step to that music which he hears, however measured or far, far away. Oh, well. <laughs> You better get some sleep. Sweet dreams, honey. <sighs> oh, and put that frog in the garage before your father sees it. Hey, Arlo, you look confused. Are you a dream? A dream? Hey, you know, see, I'm a frog. A frog? Well, not really a frog. You're not really a frog. Yeah, of course not. Of course not. I'm a Prince Giuseppe Bonadono. Giuseppe Buen... what? Yeah, better you call me Gus. I'm a frog, 600 years. I thought the teen years were rough. But someday you grow up. I stay frog another 600 years, unless... Unless what? Unless I get a kiss. You mean... One kiss from beautiful woman turned me back into prince. He's reading. Out loud. It was the dinosaurs. What dinosaurs? The plastic ones I got him when he was a kid. He started reading books on dinosaurs. Then he started reading books on hmm, snakes. Then he bought some snakes. And the snakes took over the garage. They took over his room. Now they've taken over our lives. Bill, we have to remember we have a son who gets straight A's, whose teachers all like him, and who comes home right after school. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about. Well, we should thank our lucky stars that dinosaurs are extinct. <laughs> Sure. <laughs>
Why me? What? Why did you choose me? Hey, Arlo, how many people take a frog on their first date? So, this is your school, no? Hmm. I see that style coming back. Coming back? Sir, I, I, I just need a little fresh air. How was I to know we were dissecting frogs today? Are you okay? The young lady from the theater, no? You should know. You sat on her lap. How's it going? You sure have a lot of friends. If you don't mind, I stay over here. Snakes make me uh, uncomfortable. People make me uncomfortable. There. Just wait until those science fair judges see this. They want you hurry with crickets. Are they hungry? Hurrying, I'm hurrying. Peter, Mary, now don't go down your food. Kenneth, I got your favorite grub. You know, Gus, we got a chance to make a great contribution to science. I just want a key, yes. Gus, I'd like to help you, but let's face it. How can I get you kissed when I can't get kissed? I thought you'd like Susie. Well, it's not a question if I like her. It's how much she hates me. She's very impressed by those, uh, worms. Yeah, she did like my talk, didn't she? Worms, do they know their left hand from their right? You go on date, no? A date? Why would a wonderful, beautiful girl like Susie want to go out with me? Why not? Let me see. Because I'm skinny, homely, nerdy, clumsy, and in short, a real Rubus. You know, those are good reasons. But what about you being a good scientist? Who cares? I met Einstein once. All the girls like to kiss Einstein. I never heard that. Hey, Arlo. All you need is a confidence. Well, I'm pretty a confident they'll think I'm a nerd. Leave it to me. I get a you date, you get a me kiss. Go ahead. Uh... Maybe we should do this later, Gus. My chemistry class starts in a... What do you lose? Already she think you are Aruba. That's Rubis. Remember, a confidence. <clears throat> uh, Susie? Would you? Well, I mean, could I ask? Spit it out, Arlo. Would you like to be my science fair? I mean, my my science fair partner. Oh, sure, Arlo. Oh, well, that's okay. I mean, I didn't think, well, you know, it was just an idea, and I... Well, did you say... Yeah, sure, I'll be your science fair partner. What I tell you? A confidence. I do not believe it. Well, I need the grade. Otherwise, I can't become a cheerleader. And you heard Jim. Arlo always gets A's. I know. But you'll have to be with him sometimes. Well, if I can become a cheerleader, it'll be worth it. I think. Is it me, or has Arlo been acting strangely? It's just another metamorphic stage of the growth experience, honey. I'll get it. See what I mean? It's strange. Uh, this is Susie, my science fair partner. Hi. 
Chickens. Are these all yours? They sure are. Starting from the right, that's Henry, a green tree python. That's Terry, a king snake. Bridget, a corn snake. There's Jonathan, the monitor. Um, Gertrude, my iguana. Oh, I guess you'd like to see our science fair project. Can I just see from here? used to be blind reptiles, but I changed it. I'm glad to hear that. Now it's how frogs communicate. And here's a star of our exhibit, thus. Harlow, so what if frogs communicate? Well, the ramifications could apply to a variety of species. The brains of frogs are primitive. Well, the brains of most frogs. People always underestimate things they don't understand. All creatures have feelings. And maybe our science experiment will help them take another look. Well, they're not really that slimy. Everybody in their cages? Oh, I hope so. Uh, yeah, I just uh, brought you guys some uh, salty sailor pretzels. I know how hard you, you have to work with these uh, toads, but you still have to eat, right? Uh, thanks, Dad. Oh, Susie, I think it's great that girls like you love reptiles like my son does. Oh, well, I... I mean, uh, I love them, too. <laughs> I, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't know what to do without them. Uh, they're very interesting, uh, and I think... Ah, ah, oh, 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 those turtles, they just sort of sneak up on you like that, and, uh, well, I, I guess I'll, I'll leave you two alone now. I know you have a, a lot of work to do on your uh, science uh, project. Wait, germ cobbler, anyone? How do you stand it, you and him alone, with all those things? Well, at least it'll be over soon. Arlo will have the whole thing done in another week. I gotta hand it to you. I mean, I would not have been able to use Arlo like that and still look him in the eye. Yeah. Gotta hand it to me. What'd he say? Ah, uh, that's easy. A mating call. Close. That a dinner call. Two long croaks, one short. You know some Gus? We're on the trail of a major scientific breakthrough. If it wasn't for you, I'd still be doing blind reptiles. Alone. Oh, this is your idea. You're the scientist. Just think what Einstein could have done with this. But we still got a lot of work ahead. You work. I see. You know something? I think Susie really likes me. Maybe she'd like to go to Whittlestone's pet shop with me. Pet shop? Arlo, what about a nice Italian restaurant? A little music, a little pasta? By the way, when I get kissed... Hey, I'm working on it. A promise is a promise, and I promise I'll get you kissed. Thanks, honey. Next? Uh... Would it be any extra if you kissed me with your eyes closed? No, for you, handsome, no extra charge. All right, batter up. I guess I come on it too strong. Remember when you used to kiss me goodnight and make me feel better? Oh, Arlo. You want a good night kiss? Not me, Mom. My frog. What about Susie? Absolutely not. Hey, Arlo. Uh, it was just an idea. Gus. Who's Gus? His frog. He wanted you to kiss a frog? I bet you did things like that when you were his age. I didn't know what a frog was until Arlo came along. I mean, Susie looks like a nice girl, even if she does like snakes. 
here I thought Arlo was finally joining the major leagues. Is there some disease, you know, that makes people like toads more than people? Maybe we should have a talk with him. Yeah, well, if we talk, it's going to be in my ballpark, not with those mm. snakes. For the onions. Hmm, looks scientific. Arlo, your father and I would like to have a talk with you. Gertrude didn't get out again. No. Mm, you see... Go ahead. There's no snakes here. Uh, yeah. Well, you see, son, when I was your age, uh, I did things that all the other guys did. I don't think I'm old enough, Dad. No, that's not what I mean. I mean that, uh, well, maybe we swallowed a few dozen goldfish. Really? I wish my garter snake ate like that. Arlo, what he's trying to say is, well, we went to parties, to football games, to civil rights demonstrations. Well, I went to civil rights demonstrations. Yeah, that's right, with people. Arlo, you see, people are warm-blooded creatures, okay? And toads are cold-blooded. And, and when you mix warm and cold, you get uh, lukewarm-blooded. Uh... Thanks, Dad. Well, you can't argue with that, can you? <laughs> Notice the subject bee frogs in the soundproof vessel. Their only auditory input comes from the speaker, which is connected to this microphone in front of subject A frog. Gus. Now watch this. Prompted by the auditory and visual stimulation of the crickets, Gus, subject A frog, should begin to croak, food is here. Upon hearing the food call, the subject B frog should hop towards the speaker inside the soundproof vessel. Now watch this. Snakes are the natural enemies of frogs. Gus will croak, get the heck out of here, danger. Gus will croak, get the heck out of here, danger. And the subject bee frogs beat a hasty retreat. Wow! It works! I mean, I know it really works. Of course it works. You know, before I started working with you, I, I never given much thought to frogs. Yeah, you didn't even know I was in your science class. And this is how they smoke. You did a nice job. 
With the lava. Don't you just love lava? Looking good, Gus. Grazie. You know... <laughs> this is Arlo Anderson, one of our best science students. And this is Susie Bennett, my partner. Susie? I would never have thought that you took such an interest in science. Very smart, pairing up with Arlo Anderson. Well, Arlo, let's see how this works. As our project will demonstrate, frogs have an extremely complex system of communication. When the bull, or dominant amphibian, subject A here, lets out a middle white rod capabilities inherent in Rana Caraspiana, or the common bullfrog. It's not bad. How frogs communicate? Yuck. Only a real poindexter could think of something like that. Arlo thinks that understanding frogs will help us understand ourselves. <laughs> You're kidding. Gosh, you had a rougher time than I thought. Well. Arlo, what happened to the blind reptiles? Well, amphibian communication has sort of captured my attention in the past few weeks. You aren't serious about this, are you, young man? Well, yes, sir. Oh, this is nothing more than a trained animal act. How'd you do it? Electric shocks? Electric shocks? Arlo, do you realize you're speaking of a type of communication associated with higher life forms? Well, that's exactly the question I'm asking. What, what do we mean by higher life forms? You expect us to believe this? This toad has a brain the size of this pencil point. But this isn't a toad. No, don't! You certainly chose an ugly representative of the species. Could I please have... G Subject A back, please? What's this? A scar from an electrode? Get a you peasant's claws off of me. What did you say? I you! Uh, I'm allergic to frogs. What are you so nervous about, hmm? My theory of amphibian communication is based on a solid foundation of several tests. Frogs use the vocal auditory channel for the communicative act. They broadcast a transmission and have directional reception. Mr. Anderson, where is your verification? Well, I believe this project presents plenty of verification. They want a verification, I give them verification. We're not here to play games. The integrity of this experiment has been severely compromised. Frogs have a syntax. True, it has not been proven that the communicative act is for communication alone. Mr. Anderson, in all my years of judging science fairs, I have never seen anyone falsify their data. Can you believe this? The only reason you worked with that nerd was to pass science. Now he's ruining the whole thing because of some stupid frog. Uh, certainly the data here proves beyond reasonable doubt that amph amphibians communicate. Sometimes better than people. Those stinking, mud-eating serfs. Dr. Harding, I must say I find the boy's hypothesis outlandish, but also intriguing. From the results of the field tests, can we review your linear verification? Gentlemen, why don't we move on to the next exhibit? Why didn't you stick with the blind reptiles?
crack? Susie. It was too good to be true for a Rubus like me. I've not been much help, no? Well, I haven't been much help getting you kissed, either. You did prove my hypothesis. I don't care what those scientists say. You're right. What do they know? I met Galileo once. No one believed him a world of flat. Uh, Gus, the world's round. What? I no believe it. Maybe they'll let me back in school. When I get out of jail. The time off for good behavior. Hey, a confidence. Let's face it, Gus. It's not working out. We keep getting in each other's way. Maybe you're right. What will you do now? Oh, no worry about me. Just got to stay away from science fairs. Next time you need a friend to help you join the human race, P pick someone who really belongs. Oh. So long, Gus. Arlo? Someday people realize truth about you. Real prince. told me you were using me. I still would have helped you pass science. I never really wanted to be a cheerleader anyway. You know, the judges were wrong about our... your science exhibit. Yeah. Gus proved that. What do you mean, Gus? Well, it was... You see, 
Gus is no ordinary frog. Gus was sticking up for me. That's why he started to sing that Samore. You see, it's like it's like a call for a frog's dinner. Or is it a mating call? Anyway, frogs love that song. Well, let's get this straight. Now, I know the science fair judges couldn't understand frog communication, but what are you saying? Remember the theater? You thought the croaks were coming from the screen? I certainly remember that. But at that time, I didn't know Gus was Gus until I went home, and there he was. Now, go slow. This is the part I don't get. That's when he started talking to me. OK. OK, I understand. Like frog talk, right? Well, no. Like people talk. People talk? Like, like English? Well, Italian. But what is English wasn't bad. You see, Gus is very well cultured. He's been around. Heck, he knew Leonardo da Vinci. Oh. You know that underwater diving suit Leonardo invented? That was Gus's idea. Well, Leonardo drew the design, of course. And you know the helicopter he was supposed to think up? Arlo. 600 years ago, there was a prince. Prince Giuseppe Bueno Dono Tarantini. Giuseppe Bueno. You know, Gus. He's a frog, 600 years. And he'll stay that way forever. Unless. Unless what? Unless he gets a kiss. You mean? One kiss will change him back into a prince. You really think this frog is a prince? Well, if he's not a prince, at least he's a pretty good guy. Where is Gus? Well, we sort of agreed to go our separate ways. Last I saw him, he was down by Grossman's Pond. I'll do it. Do what? I'll kiss the Gus. kids were going to the dogs. Yeah, maybe we should leave a few frogs back at the school. <laughs> I bet some of them would graduate. Yeah. <laughs> With honors. I didn't think they'd call the police. Who do you call when frogs attack a high school? That's got to be the last load. Come on. Gus! Oh, Gus! No. Hey, Gus! Oh, no. Hey, Gus! Gus! Well, how do you know which one is Gus? Well... He has sort of a smiley mouth. A smiley mouth? Gus! 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 Are you smiling or frowning? Gus! Gus! Hey, Gus!
Arlo, Susie, please make way. Thank you very much. Arlo, I, I beg your pardon. You think they're crazy? Nowadays, you never can tell with kids. Let's take them in. Susie, save your kisses for me. I'm the only real prince in a pond. Thanks. But nothing happened. I'm not a very good kisser, I guess. Oh, Gus probably wasn't there. I'm sure you kissed great. You think so? Taking us to jail. You'll never believe what these two delinquents have been up to tonight. These are no delinquents. This is my son, a scientist. Arlo, Susie, we owe you a big apology. Dr. Fritzky rechecked your data. You've made a great discovery. Oh, wonderful. We were skeptical that kids your age could have such insights, but when we saw all those frogs, that was all the verification we needed. Well, I uh... suspected the hypothesis might be correct, but such a demonstration convinced us. Why didn't you tell us the frogs were coming? Of course, both of you win the science scholarship. Science scholarship? And the results of your exhibit will be published in Amphibian Today magazine. Oh, I knew all those seaweed casseroles would pay off someday. The first college graduate in the family. Chip off the old block. Woo! See, I told you to hang on to those frogs. I still think Arlo's a dweeb, but at least you're okay. <laughs> Kathy, calm down. You're upsetting Birch. <laughs> Here's to the next Einsteins, Susie and Arlo. He's probably in a Louisiana swamp by now. Don't worry. We'll find him someday. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm going to sing for you tonight a love song. A love, she's a special language, understood by everybody in everything. This is a very special song for two very special people. In Napoli, where love, she's a king. When boy meets girl, here's what they say. When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's amore. When the world seems to shine like you've had too much wine, that's amore. Bells will ring, ting-a-ling-a-ling, ting-a-ling-a-ling, and you sing Vita Bella. Hearts will play tippy-tippy-tay, tippy-tippy-tay, like a guitar and tella. Lucky fella. When the stars make you drool, just like pasta for zoo, that's some more. When you walk down the street with the cloud at your feet, you're in love. When you walk in a dream, but you know you're not dreaming, Signore. Oh, excuse me, but you see, back in old Napoli, there's 